Hello everyone, my name is Darren Huang. I'm from the Embedded System Laboratory of EPFL. Today I'm introducing our work on the accurate thermal modeling of heterogeneous multi-core processors. This is the outline of today's presentation. First, I will introduce the background of thermal modeling and simulators. Then, I will present the new features of 3DIs, including the non-uniform thermal modeling and co-simulation interface to support the different heat sinks. Finally, it's a summary of this work and the roadmap for our future work. So first, why do we need a thermal simulator? Period a figure of microprocessors typical power trend in 50 years. Recently, the power can easily reach hundreds of watts. This means it's not a dream at all to cook beef on your CPU nowadays. Such high power profiles can easily introduce severe thermal issues and degrade not only the reliability, but also performance of the whole system. To address these emerging thermal issues, we need to consider all aspects of system design, including the SOC, cooling, and the dynamic thermal management, which is DTM. Therefore, it makes sense to introduce the thermal simulators and they can help us to facilitate the thermal analysis process and then improve the system design in the area of high performance computing. Although thermal simulators play a key role in the thermal analysis process, their development lags behind the modern microprocessors advancement. This table summarizes the state of the art thermal simulators. Hotspot is the first thermal simulator to reach wide adoption in the thermal analysis workflow. In particular, Hotspot can manage transient thermal simulations with a conventional air cooling heatsink. With the latest version, it supports microfluidic cooling. However, the use of sovereign CUDA can only solve the linear equation systems, and only in the block mode. Non-uniform thermal modeling is partially supported because each flow plan element is regarded as a single thermal grid. Moreover, it's bounded by the monolithic architecture design, where both the silicon and heatsink are simulated in a tightly coupled code base. Therefore, its heatsink support is limited to air cooling the hair. The ASAC and the LUTSIM simulators introduce the different techniques to improve the simulation speed. Nonetheless, their capabilities are similar to hotspot, as they use the same integration method with a simple heatsink. Even LUTSIM cannot support transient simulation. NanoHeat brings the simulation down to the gate level. This allows seeing temperature variations at a fine level of detail. However, it still requires an accurate simulation of the heatsink. With the problem that the heatsink support is still simple and linear in NanoHeat. Local and the original version of 3 ds support both microfluidic and air cooling. However, local only supports steady state simulation, and both simulators do not make it open to more cooling solutions. Terminator is targeting for smartphones. It can perform a thermal simulation of an entire smartphone, including the SOC printed circuit, battery, and screen. However, the simulation is limited to steady state. MT introduced support for nonlinear differential equations. Therefore, it can model the temperature-dependent material inside the chip. However, like other simulators, it only supports a simple heat sink. In this work, to overcome the drawbacks of existing thermal simulators, and adapt to the development of modern microprocessors, we present the 3DS 3.1. It's the first thermal simulator to introduce both fully customized non-uniform thermal modeling and a co-simulation interface to support different heatsink designs with nonlinear support in nature. Consequently, in the rest of the presentation, we will detail the key new features of 3DS 3.1. Let's start first with the non-uniform capability. Here is a picture I borrowed from the hot gauge paper. It demonstrates hot spots in a seven nanometer client processor, similar to Intel Scalic. There is a big hotspot zone and several local hotspots on the chip. However, for the rest part, 
which take up which take up most areas of the chip are critical. This phenomenon is very common in modern microprocessors, especially as the heterogeneous SOC design has gained more popularity over the decades. The dilemma for the existing simulators is that it needs finer grids to capture hotspots on the chip, but this increases the computing and the memory demands of the overall thermal simulation. So we propose using the knowing from thermal modeling to have finer grids for hotspot regions will cause a grid for the cool zones, which occupy most of the chip's area. Therefore, we can elevate the burden of the thermal simulation. In 3D ice, knowing from modeling at all levels is supported. Here is an example. This describes a 3D IC with three layers in 3D ice, including the PCB, core, memory, from the bottom to top. Previously, in the uniform modeling, all the layers must have the same discretion level, like five multiply five in this setting. However, this is not the case in the non-uniform modeling. For example, we can give a PCB layer a coarser grid size, like two multiply two, if we don't focus on it. And we can give a finer grid size for the core layer. More than that, we provide a customized discretion level for each floor plan element on the die. We can give a core zero, a coarser grid if it's not a hotspot. We can give other cores a relative finer grid based on their temperature profiles. In the end, we can have a coarser grid again for the top memory layer. In summary, we provided a fully customized non-uniform discretion method in 3 ds for each die, layer, and floor plan element to achieve arbitrary discussion levels for the chip. Of course, supporting non-uniform modeling is not only discrediting the thermal grids. We also need to build the thermal system to launch the thermal simulation. Similar to the circuit analysis, we can regard the temperature as a voltage source and the power input as the current source. Materials inside the chip have thermal conductance and capacitance to transfer and store the heat. Let's focus on the thermal conductance first. It's simple in a uniform mode because each thermal grid share the same size and they are fully connected on each edge. For example, in this ideal 2D scenario, the layer is divided into four squares and the length of each square is six. The thermal conductance is just the same for the four thermal grids. And each thermal grid has two neighbors. However, in the non-uniform case, as I divided the previous grids, two and three, into three smaller grids, five, six, seven here, then the thermal grids are not fully connected anymore. Grid one now partly connects to the grid five and six. In this case, we calculate the thermal conductance based on the interconnected area between the grids. For example, the thermal conductance between grid one and five is two thirds of the conductance between grid one and two because the interconnected area is two thirds of the previous one. Similarly, thermal conductance can be calculated for each pair of the connected grid based on the internal connected area. And for the thermal capacitance, it's just based on the volume of the thermal grid. We will skip it because it's not difficult to calculate in both uniform and non-uniform scenario. Will the thermal conductance calculation method is determined? There are still several pieces of key information missing here. How do we efficiently find the interconnected cells in the same layer and also between the different layers? Besides, how do we find the interconnected area between the thermal grids? The answer is simple and efficient because we applied an algorithm called the Minkowski difference. We can abstract any pair of the thermal grid into two rectangles and then calculate the Minkowski difference set between the thermal grids. Then, if the thermal grids in the same layer are interconnected, one edge of the Minkowski difference set will just across the origin point. And the interconnected length is the shorter part of the edge divided by the origin point. If there are two rectangles interconnected between different layers, they will be overlapped. 
then the Minkowski difference set will contain the origin point. Similarly, the interconnected area is the smallest area divided by the x and y axis. After addressing all of the nine form modeling challenges, we verified the nine form 3D eyes with the ansites for a 3D IC design. The left figure demonstrates the steady state temperature map from the ansite simulation. And the red figure presents very similar and accurate results from the nine form 3D eyes. In particular, the maximum error for the course is only 0.4 degrees. In this table, we list the average temperature of four hotspots, which are four cores in the floor plan. Each row represents a different method, including the ANSES, uniform 3D eyes, and the nine from 3D eyes. Nine from 3D demonstrates very close simulation results to ANSES, while the uniform 3D eyes has a larger variation from ANSES. So compared with the uniform modeling method, why is non-uniform 3D eyes more accurate and similar to the outside simulation? In the non-uniform 3D eyes or ANSIS, each floor plan element is divided individually into several small grids without influencing each other. However, in the uniform modeling method, some grids may share the power and the temperature from different floor plan elements. This will degrade the simulation accuracy especially when the neighbor floor plan elements have a very different power density and the temperature profiles. This is actually one limitation of all thermal simulators using the uniform modeling method. Non-uniform 3D cannot only perform steady state simulation, it can also manage transient simulation. For example, here is an animation of the temperature map for the core lake. We also verified the transient simulation results with ANSIS. In particular, the transient temperature response of the floor plan element called Devo is included in the first subplot of this figure for both ANSIS and non from 3 eyes. The second subplot is for the error between the two simulation methods. Similarly, transient temperature response of the sub layer is demonstrated in the red figure. This table summarizes the error distribution the average error is only 0 0.3 degree. The maximum error is 4 degrees and only exists at the beginning of the simulation. In this experiment, the grid size for core zero is two times finer than the substrate, but they both demonstrate a high accuracy. Next, I will present a key new feature of 3D eyes related to enabling co simulation with different heat sink models. This feature is essential today as cooling technology is rapidly changing. It started with basic fan cooling. Nowadays, liquid cooling is becoming more and more popular. In the meantime, new technologies are booming, like thermal electric cooling, and also evaporation-based cooling, like heat pipes and vapor chambers. Phase change cooling is also implemented recently. In summary, although there are so many types of different cooling solutions for microprocessors, only simple cooling methods are supported in existing thermal simulators. Besides, their monolithic design, which combines the simulation of heatsink and silicon, is very difficult to modify. This prevents the users to adopt new cooling methods. To tackle these challenges, we separated the heatsink simulation from the 3D eyes by introducing a co-simulation interface. Therefore, we can have a better and easier heat sink support in 3D eyes. But how do we manage that? First, we still keep the core function of 3D eyes here. Additionally, we create and simulate different heat sink models using mod Open Modelic. Then, we connect the system by using the developed co simulation interface. In this way, we can support different and non linear heat distribution systems while we'll leaving the chip simulator untouched. We can also support the variable flow rate of heat sink by defining an optional flow rate file. In summary, we change the perspective of supporting different heat sink models, moving away from monolithic thermal simulators that are so difficult to extend, and only experts can modify them. With 3D eyes and the new co simulation interface, the barrier to supporting new heat sink models has been lowered users can add and child different heat sink models easily. Therefore, 
we name it as the pluggable heat sink. For now, in 3DIs, two real heat sink models are supported, fan cooling and liquid cooling. We will soon publish a tutorial paper on how to design new heat sink models for 3DIs. And we will release a library of heat distribution building blocks to make it even easier to build a new heat sink. Here is a case study of the pluggable heat sink simulation. In the first figure, we used a commercial fan cooling heat sink named HS483. First, we disable the fan and the hotspot temperature in the thermal test chip raises to around 100 degrees. Then we power on the fan and the temperature drops. After we increase the fan speed again, the temperature drops more as expected. As for the water cooling solution, the model's name is Cuplex. We first use a small flow rate. The hotspot temperature rises to around 70 degrees. Then we increase the water flow rate and the temperature drops as expected. Finally, we use a larger flow rate to decrease the temperature again. We also verify the two heat sink models with a real thermal test chip. The first figure demonstrates the nature convection. We can see that the 3DS treated the matter results very well. Then, in the first convection mode with the fan operating at 2700 RPM, the 3DS simulation results also demonstrate a good match with the measurement results. We also compare the 3DS with the matter results for the liquid cooling. In this experiment, the water cooling heat sink is configured to have a water flow rate at 0.1 liter per minute. And the power of the thermal test chip changes with time. The comparison results also verify that the 3DS works very well in the liquid cooling cylinder. In summary, we list the average and the maximum errors in this table for different heat sink models. Overall, the average error is below one degree and the maximum error is below five degrees for all cases. In summary, we have introduced a new knowing from microprocessor thermal simulator, namely 3DS 3.1, with a co-simulation interface to support different cooling systems. And it provides better accuracy and flexibility thanks to the non uniform modeling and the co-simulation interface design. As for the future work, first, we plan to support asymmetrical thermal conductance in different axes. We will also support an even large range of possible new heat sink models to address the cooling needs of nanoscale chips, especially supporting new heat sinks such as heat pipes and vapor chambers are working in progress. Last but not least, we plan to embed 3DIs with the open source computer architecture simulator, Gen5X, to offer a holistic solution for some of our microprocessor design. That's all. Thanks for your patience. Please download and check our latest version of 3 in our website. You can join the, join the email list for any support or question. You can also contact me for any questions.